<laughs> must be episode 14. Close. Well, we skip. We don't do that number, though. Uh, so unlucky. You know why right, it's unlucky? Episode 13. You know why it's unlucky? Why? Do you not know? No. It's to do with the 13th disciple. Hang on, what is it? The 13th... Ah, he doesn't know. He's dropping a fact and he doesn't know. Standard for this show, isn't it? Standard. Yeah, pretty much. So pretty standard. Much, dude. It's to do with the 13th person sat at the table, you know, in that painting of Jesus, mm. The Last Supper, because he he did something to... The Judas or whatever. That's right. That's right. He was a, he was so... a bad egg. And he was number was 13, so that's there why. There you go. Yeah, so that's... Oh, I do love it when you see race plates turned upside down. I quite like that superstitious, superstitious stuff. It's yeah. quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there must be some. I mean, even when like Michael Jordan with that last dance, he wore another... Yeah. Did he wore 42? 45, 45, yeah. And... Someone was like, 45 is not 23. And then that was the moment that he changed back. Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Crazy. Funny stuff. What have you been up to? May have been busy, bro. Like I said, just before we started uh, the official recording, it's been busy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've been had a, a pretty steady weekend, mostly just sort of filled with work stuff. I know this sort of bores the bores the tears off people listening, but work stuff's been pretty busy at the moment. Uh, so we got Good like, dog. yeah, I got like a goggle coming out. So I'm working on that. Uh, I got a mountain bike goggle, mo- motocross mountain bike goggle coming out this week with uh, nice. with Red Bull Specs. I've been working on that, and then we got doing like the sales meeting for Saks all virtually tomorrow so like my whole day is taken up with just sat at the laptop which is really disappointing because it's usually in a nice place in the world like Paris or Vancouver yeah or... but oh, it's all so done virtual Zoom meetings have been going down us yeah I wonder how much their stock's gone up like oh those, mate those I, bet companies. I bet it's doing pretty good a lot of... also it must have been strange because they wouldn't have been prepared for this at all like imagine all the extra nice. servers and all that sort of stuff that, that it needs so yeah. So yeah, other than that, dude, just uh, yeah, nice long ride at the weekend in the rain. Uh, nice. God, I'm trying to think. I think that's pretty much it. What about you? Good, mate. Well, today, as it, so, what people won't realise is that I'm late. I'm oh, late, yeah. and I'm late, but for a re- I've actually got good reasons. Yeah. Well, first of all, my my truck threw a belt, so I had to, so I had to fit a new belt, like an alternator belt. Mm. And then nothing lines up. It's all old, and I wasn't sure if I was doing it right. And it's all fiddly, like cars. You can't get your tools into the right spot. So I had a whole morning of that amongst it. And then I decided to quickly pop to my local bike shop, MB Cyclery, to get my e-bike fixed up. Yeah. And when I say quickly, <laughs> it was not quick. I was. I did. I, I actually is good opportunity to say thank you. This one, this one. Let's have a shout out for the local bike shops mm. because honestly, I don't know what I'd do if I like. Really, it was it was insane. The whole motor was dropped out, battery was dropped out, all because I smashed the display. Oh uh, right, right. But it was just such like so hard to uh, get it done, and they're so busy at the minute. Like I, I when I pulled up, I sat outside, and the queue, dude. Really. For the bike shop, it's just like ten Dude, people. Dude, bike shops are with... pumping at the moment. It's yeah. insane. It's good, but it's bad at the same time because they can't it... cope. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's good, and especially when you get someone like me, who, like obviously they're really good friends of mine. So yeah. like, they they always try and fit me in when they can, and oh, and my job was the worst job ever. Honestly, we had the motor out, battery out, we're levering things off, and Ugh. oh. Good Shout out those guys, they're cool, cool bunch of dudes. Mike, isn't it? Mike down at MBU, people yeah, might know Mike, from some old Mike like and edits and stuff. Yeah, so Mikey was my old teammate from yeah. DMR Ye- yeah. years ago. We used to do contests together. He was, yeah, he, he's an amazing rider. That's the cool thing about that. Like a lot of shops, they're the, the, the shops that survive are led by people who are proper riders, aren't they? Totally, totally. So the, Mike the, and Ben are both killers on bikes yeah there's a bit of a a formula to running a good bike shop i think you know obviously having a good brand is pretty paramount to it but i think the almost as important as that is just creating a really good community and just being good people i you know i think a lot of bike shops did have it quite easy for many years of the cycling boom and it was like oh just open a bike shop we'll make loads of money and then as it's got a little bit harder they've all filtered out the internet you know taking over and stuff like that but there's definitely a formula of sort of like good people who know what they're on about cool community good vibe yeah and, it, and they pick the right brands if they're the like, right brands if yeah. they know what they're on about they they 
instantly don't sell stuff that they don't believe in. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool. And a lot of brands, obviously Mike and Ben are actually um, Bren's World Cup mechanics as well. Okay, right. So so they work with a lot of the brands that that all of us like ride for yeah. in terms of um, product development and all sorts. So yeah, they're, they're big thanks to them yeah. always. Cool. And just bike shops across the board, I reckon. Because, you know, like these direct brands are cheap, but... You know what? What do you do? Yeah. What do you do when something goes wrong? You have to send it, or I don't know. It's not like ASOS. You can't just stick it in the post, <laughs> is it? No. no, it's a bit harder, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. For sure. A lot harder than that. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I had my first sort of this. I, I feel really bad about this actually, but my first sort of glimpse at reality outside of my little bubble yesterday. Because usually, throughout this whole pandemic, probably the same as you, man. I've kept myself to myself. I only really sort of engage with people who work in the same industry or are into the same sort of stuff if yeah. that makes sense other than when we're not in a pandemic where you might meet you know my girlfriend's friend and her boyfriend and you start going outside of your own little bubble yeah, yeah so yeah. yesterday was the first time and i do feel bad that you know i met i met my friend sorry emma's my girlfriend's friends for a walk and he works in steel work like steel industry in sheffield and he was like you know, asking me how things have been. I was like, to be honest, man, like I've been pretty good. I've, you know, done this podcast series. Like business is really good. The bike industry in general is is pretty healthy. And he's like, oh man, like you know, I'm worried for my job and there's no work coming through. He's been put back on furlough. They're telling him he's got to have, he's gonna get a uh, a pay cut or made redundant. And it was like my first glimpse at like, oh, there's like a world outside my little bubble I've lived in for three months. Really yeah, weird. Totally, really yeah. weird really really weird uh and i did feel slightly guilty that i'd not i'm not saying i've not thought about it that's not true but i'd not really engaged with anyone who works outside of my immediate bubble yeah and there's way fewer of yous than there are of that peter bloke who's yeah. you know like that is the majority of people so mm. it's it's mind-blowing isn't it yeah yeah it is bloody weird yeah it's bloody weird so, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It was just my first real glimpse at, I guess, reality outside of my own little bubble yeah. that I surround myself with. I mean, again, maybe like you, you know, most of my friends all work in the bike industry or action sports yeah. or outdoor industry or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of... I kind think, of yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of, like, my friends are either in bikes or they've, like, got trades. And a lot of, for a lot of um, trades people, I think life has been pretty much the same. A yeah. Lot, a lot of the time, like, they continued to work they made it maybe had a week off and then mm. got back to it or found a way of of doing it so yeah, yeah. It's, it's mad how people's experience differs like some people must have it so bad some yep. people must have it like what's it all about i don't even know i totally. haven't even noticed totally totally and i think again that's sort of maybe where i fall in i think the first few weeks no doubt we spoke about it on here but the first few weeks were really scary the first three weeks were just like shit what what are we gonna do here like this is not gonna be good it's gonna be a rough few months but then things have settled down and we've sort of just carried on like normal so yeah yeah dude you know what what is exciting we're on episode 13 so we've done 13 episodes yeah and arguably we've got our biggest guest i think so I, yeah yeah i'm quite excited about our i'm really cause, excited cause to be honest if i'm honest i've been fanboying him throughout the whole pandemic because he looks like he's got stuff worked out yeah i think so and everything he's put out has been rad yeah. and uh dude yeah who's stoked. who's gonna say the name i'm stoked who's say the name i mean the rock i mean who who'd have thought that it, it... <laughs> <laughs> but dude danny mackerskill i mean it's yeah i don't know i'm honored that he even was willing to do it again yeah too right you know i'm, I'm honored Daddy, i really man. am i mean I, I hit him up sent him a quick text and he was like yeah of course yeah i'll come on i was like fuck wow it's cool what a hero man. honored honestly absolutely honored so yeah i'm stoked man we're gonna get danny mack on in 15 20 minutes so yeah psyched, psyched. hopefully i always say I, i'm always a little bit nervous whether it'll happen or not <laughs> we've had too many but, technical difficulties no, have, have we like, like no. we've had clay who's driving along yeah which was tough yeah that was but other than that it's been it's been good hasn't it yeah 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 yeah, yeah it has big shout good, out to good, Skype. good producer really <laughs> really good producer like <laughs> yeah it's sure the team the team yeah. have made it you know happen yeah the, the team the, really the team. work hard yeah the team have been killing it behind the scenes 
So the yeah, G wagons. Having, if I love the latest Might Rides, man. The latest Might Rides is really cool. Oh, thanks, cool. man. Yeah, I loved it. Thank you. It, it was, was nice so to get a bit of a closer it. look at the G wagon. Yeah. So quite, quite the vehicle. It's quite the analog experience. I think from the outside, you think because they they barely change those cars. It's quite mm. cool. Like yeah, yeah. All of the really fancy ones still share the same, all the same chassis, panels, yeah. loads of parts. Yeah. Like they've just made the interior real fancy. It's cool. And obviously the motor isn't like a tractor engine like my one has but <laughs> you're quite a bit of a car mechanic then or what because no, i wouldn't I'm, fancy I'm a, doing that have a go I'm oh, have right a go hero i'd way rather have a go on weirdly on like cars and motorcycles than i would on push bikes push bikes i've got lazy and as i say, i just take stuff to mb because i just think everything's so fiddly mm. and, I, and it's so like precise and i don't want to get it wrong and i'd rather just hand over the responsibility of my my rear mech to someone else that's fair my dad's a car mechanic and i remember like growing up doing the whole motocross scene and all that the amount of bolts that he'd round off dude at a track would just be astronomical he'd be there like cranking on a t-bar like an eight milli t-bar and he's like really i'm like dad what are you doing just nip it up it's good dude the back wheel customer coming back I, I, i i was like 25 probably before i could undo a back wheel that my dad put on he'd be like <laughs> that is a dad thing over tightening stuff a dad thing proper, for sure call it steve tight proper tight everything just <laughs> the most rigid funny, bike I'm... ever <laughs> yeah i've really lost like my i used to love just taking bikes apart cleaning stuff re-greasing it putting it back together yeah. really careful with everything i've really lost that like i really don't enjoy it now right i find it really fiddly and annoying and almost the i know less now like i take my back wheel into a bike shop to get a cassette swapped over to a new wheel and i won't have the right driver or yeah. like you know stuff like that i'm just yeah. not with it and like i think maybe when we were younger there were fewer standards maybe, maybe. you just screwed in a bb do you remember those bbs you screw them in yeah, square paper yes and they'd I snap do. off stick in your leg yeah yeah Can't screw it put in a new one <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do. You're right, though, man. I think now they're so advanced. It's just you want to go to your local bike shop and get it done properly, don't you? I don't yeah. touch them at all. I barely touch a bike. Do you, yeah. It's broke. It's what like, about cars? Yeah. yeah, I don't, don't have to do that, thank God, anymore. Yeah, I just got a nice new car. Before, oh, yeah, yeah. we used to bodge things back together. And, yeah, thank, thankfully, I don't have to do that anymore. As fun as it is, yeah. I remember, like, when we first started doing this, like, running Hook It!, I couldn't afford a good vehicle. I think we spoke about this, actually. So I was driving all sorts of crap, dude, all over the UK, and it'd break, and I'd be on the phone to my dad, like, what do I do with this? This light's come on. Oh, God, it's painful. I mean, it's fun. It's tough, isn't it? Yeah, it, is it fun? It's not fun. If I was local, like I remember saying to you, I'd love to have a car like that, like a G-Wagon, but it just doesn't work for what I do for a living. I'd just end up yeah, most stuck well, somewhere. Most. Yeah, <coughs> totally dude totally mm. i do like I, I like knowing how stuff works though well definitely definitely like, like i, I we, and the weirdest thing is i have apps so like engines i couldn't i wouldn't want to drive a car without knowing approximately what's going on then when it comes to computers and phones that is like that is something i can i have no understanding of you can say right. it's ones and zeros whatever but i just don't understand how any of it works yeah yeah same same to be fair i mean, it's, like, I mean... not one bit <laughs> you know yeah yeah they are quite yeah i don't know man it's weird things isn't it like phones and stuff are just so yeah I literally no understanding at all of how that's happening at all yeah. like how am i messaging you and no i don't know you yeah i have no idea have it's no not idea mechanical really. enough for me to understand no like, i need some mirrors and string and i'm like oh yeah let's <laughs> figure yeah. it out <laughs> it makes you realize doesn't it you like we're, we're all we're all on someone else's shoulders so some smart people have worked everything out yeah and then we're just living in a time where we just use all of it without knowing like True. i love going to countries where where everyone fixes their cars everyone's in old cars and that, and it's a real like because it is a super valuable skill like keeping something going and like definitely oh this i don't know this fuel pump doesn't work but if we modify it we can fit yeah. it on and then we'll get another fifty thousand miles out of the car and then yeah. they must just be working on it the whole time mustn't they? it must be like more working on it than actually driving it yeah. But I'd like to do one of those sort of trips, like a long trip somewhere. You know, you like drive around the world in a whatever yeah. car, like a Fiat Panda or something, and it breaks and you repair it. I'd, li- I'd actually kind of probably enjoy that. 
Yeah, definitely. If you Why know what Suzuki... you're in for, like you know what yeah. you're in for. It's when it surprises you and you just like, ah, I really could, can't be bothered with this anymore. Yeah. So I had a Suzuki SJ 410, which is like the old Jimny, right. really old one. And I knew, I understood that engine and I had a VW Caddy and I understood that engine. So yeah. I was like, I'd know when something went wrong, I'd know what it was. Then I've had like new cars and you just have no idea. They're all covered in plastic and you mm. just, you're just like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. What, oh, was like the, what was the car you had before, like the Estate car? What was that? That's a Bentley, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. So, yeah. Okay, it was, a, it was a Chrysler. It was yeah. new enough that it was like... But I can imagine underneath the bonnet of that is pretty scary if you looked under it's it. It's just plastic, yeah. yeah. It's plastic, it's and, plastic and it's like electric. Connections. So you, yeah, you don't look and find out what's wrong. You plug it in, yeah. which I, I, I'm not... I guess it moves into the realms of mobile telephones, and you just... Stop understanding. Yeah, definitely. Book it in somewhere. Let someone else sort it out. What would be your car to go across the world in? Hmm, good question. Uh, Needs to be common, doesn't it? Needs to, yeah, it needs to be common. A lot of parts. Yeah. uh, I'd go, I'd go Suzuki Jimny. Nice. I'd go Jimny. It's pretty small. Solid. Compact. Yeah. Yeah. Economical. they, They probably have them all over the world. Yeah. I might, I might be, I'm thinking Hilux. Hilux they go is on good. And, on and sort of wherever you go, whatever the country, people are going to use Hilux. Hilux it? is good. That's a good shout, yeah. actually. Top Gear's one was hilarious, wasn't it? When they just kept trying to destroy yeah, it and it just funny, kept yeah. going and kept going. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. sick. Yeah, Hilux is a good shout, actually. What motorbike would you ride? G- uh, what motorbike? Mm. C90, man. I know what's going on. C90. C90, yeah. I'm all good. C90, It'd good take shout. take a while. Take a long time, you could say. The longest. <laughs> yeah. The most the boring. <laughs> what about what most boring you go on? I, I was going to say C90, but if you said it, I'd go... Nicked it. Hmm, something like a CG125. Something okay, yeah. like that. Similar engine. Again, smart choice. Smart, yeah. Now, I could be wrong. I could or be a Hayabusa. Non-knowledge. <laughs> but I think the C90 is the world's most mass-produced um, vehicle. Is it really? facts yeah i'm, I'm gonna get the fact up now so pull that, that shit up oliver pull that shit yeah, up I'm doing it <laughs> yeah the most mass-produced motorcycle in the world it's not, it's not motorcycle i think it's vehicle i need right. to get a fact dude the super carb um yeah oh man it's it is actually insane is it so in 1958 hmm. modern modern well, facts no, 60 found. million they've surpassed in really no eight 100 million in t- 2017 they, they went, they made numbers money. are a real struggle on this podcast <laughs> yeah they're tough aren't they yeah so, yeah 100 million in 2017 they produced wow that is unreal isn't it that's a lot of engines isn't wow it? yeah that's crazy they share quite a lot of parts and stuff and they're yeah. just simple it's so cool actually looking at one now i've got one at home i just need to c90 one of is my all mini. down on the gearbox is that a c90 yeah, you get different variants, right. actually. This is one thing I can talk about. Yeah, some okay. of them are up, some of them are down. Right. I mean, a, a lot of the C90s as well, they have the heel shifter. Mm. So That's you go right. down regardless. You yeah. stamp on the back or stamp on the front. Crazy. Yeah. I know, I know a few people used to switch out the old like CRF50 or XR50 engines to a C90. Yeah, that's what this thing is. That's a C seventy engine. Oh, is it? Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, that motorbike in the background for the YouTube on the YouTube version of the podcast. That's look a C seventy engine. Yeah. Just look at her. Just look at her. Just look at Fantastic. her. Fantastic. She is a beauty. Yeah. She is a stunner. Yeah, I think that's a. I think that's a solid choice, really. Both mm. choices. The CG. Should we, should we look up what the CG? How many they made of that? Or is this yeah. really not of interest? No, I'm interested, man. I'm interested in you know at the end of the day, it's our thing, so we can do it. Yeah, you could you know actually I mean? we could talk about whatever. Yeah. Anything. Anything. I prepared a quiz actually if you want to do it. Are we gonna do a quiz now? Are we, it's up are, to you. Like Danny waiting. Uh like Danny's still not not here for ten minutes. No. I'll do a quiz, yeah, I'll do a quiz. Is it gonna be another one that you ripped me on? <laughs> it's not actually. <laughs> hey! Alright, let's do it. I got that all out of the way on the first one, but people was digging the quiz. You can play along at home if you really want. Oh nice. I hadn't even thought that. I mean you don't have to wait long for the answers, but you can play along if you really want to test your knowledge. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you test hey, your threw, knowledge? I threw oranges at some kids the other day. It was hilarious, man. 
uh, so random that oh you had to you had to have seen it so behind my house is our little garden really steep drop bit of like a river which sounds beautiful but it stinks sounds, it's disgusting <laughs> you, got shopping trolleys in and you, stuff. you don't want to go in there it, it'll it'll eat you uh and then across from the river is another steep bank going upwards and then just almost like a woodland but it's yeah. only woodland because it's untouched and on the top of that is a railway track so nobody really goes in these bits of woods i'm pointing at it for people on youtube i'm sorry but nobody really goes in these woods at all because there's nothing there there's a big green you know there's green fences with all the prongs on top there's yeah. one of those is through the middle so there's literally nothing in there so i'm sat in the house the other day and i can hear all this rustling and people shouting i'm like what the like nobody's ever behind our house so i come outside and there's like three teenage boys say i don't want to make, make them sound too young because it's probably child abuse <laughs> so teenage boys uh just sort of fanning around in the woods like you know banging and breaking things and breaking branches I'm like you can't be doing that so we had this moldy bag of satsumas in the fruit bowl so i'm like right here we go so <laughs> you can like pretty much hit them from where my garden is anyway nice I thought it was so fun so it wasn't the fact of throwing the oranges at the kids, which was hilarious. It was the conversation that came after I hit one of them on the shoulder with an orange. I hit one on the shoulder with an orange. Orange bursts everywhere. And then these two kids got into this debate of how they'd been hit by an orange and where oranges grow. Because the one of them was like, it can't have been an orange. And he's like, it was definitely an orange. And he's like, I can't see any orange trees. They don't grow in Chesterfield and stuff. It was the funniest thing. Oh dear, anyway, yeah. So they weren't even building jumps or anything? Just being nuisances, man, just, yeah. Really? Yeah, they won't be coming back, I don't think. They got snipered out with satsumas. <laughs> with vitamin C! <laughs> anyway. Nice. I just looked over then and it made me, made me giggle of my exploits <laughs> the other day. All right, question one. The yeah. O-Dub quiz. Okay, so now we are both art dealers. Yeah, you're an art dealer too. Yeah. I'm an art dealer too. Uh, now we are both art dealers. I want to test your art knowledge. So, oh, shit. how much did the world's most expensive painting sell for? Oh, wow. Do you know, it, oh, goodness. This could be anything. This is like, well, all right. So it was, it was like 18 million. I remember you saying the most expensive outfit at the Oscars was. Oh, so was. this has got... This has got to be a lot more than that, I would imagine. Mm. I don't think it could be a billion because that's too insane. And it was, oh, I don't know, because they say some art is priceless. Right, I'm just going to put a, a guess in there. Okay. 100, 200 million. Ooh, no. The answer is $453 million. And it was Leo Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Monday. It's basically Bloody a depiction hell. of Christ, I believe. There you go. Like, oh my Good goodness. Good question. But but do you know what the worth? <laughs> yeah. I don't get what the worth is because it's not like there's that many people that are like, yeah, I'll have it. No, I'll have it. I'll have yeah, it. I, can't, like, I can't see there being a bidding war. No. Not with many people. No. So like, yeah, you end up thinking like when, when I don't know, I could just say my bike behind me is worth Yeah, it's very million. subjective art, isn't it? Yeah, it's a difficult one. Very subjective. I do, I, I do like it that these things exist. Mm. I do. I'm not one to spend ages in an art gallery, but I do enjoy an art gallery. I'm not going to lie. Really? Every now and then. Every now and then, yeah, I enjoy it. I can't say I've ever been to one. You must have. Don't think so. I'm trying to think about it now. Don't think so, dude. Might have been... No, don't think I've ever done it. There you go. No. See, I'd, I'd be quick to poo-poo it, but I go. if I'm in London, maybe I'll walk around the Tate or whatever, the Tate Modern. Yeah. And it's a lot of it's old bollocks, but often it'll be <laughs> old bollocks, but then you read the story and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah oh, okay. okay, yeah, All right. yeah. All right. Yeah, I saw some really interesting ones that I can't remember enough to refer to. It just becomes too hazy and pointless. <laughs> I won't talk about them. But some things make me think when I'm in art, at art galleries, so... Uh, I don't, I, yeah, I don't poo-poo it. Okay, nice. All right, question two on the quiz. 
Red Bull Rampage first took place in 2001. Who finished last? Oh, man, I'd never know that. Um, <laughs> Robbie Borden. No. No, 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 no. Um, Brett Tippy. No. The answer is Gareth Sorry, Dyer. Gareth Dyer, I even remember the, the uh, name. I don't, I'll be honest. I'm sorry for all you Gareth, Gareth Dyer fans out there, but I don't remember the name. I only remember it because I was a child and I was obsessed, and Jerry Dyer used to run Dirt Magazine. Mm. He used to be the editor of Dirt Magazine. Now I remember seeing Gareth Dyer, and I was, and I remember, you know when you're younger, you're, you're kind of My just, brothers. They must be brothers. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> but they're not. No. Different people. <laughs> no, there um, you go. There you go. Uh, okay, question three. Your mum loves bees. So, how many miles would a bee have to fly to make one pound of honey? Oh, she will have told me this as well. To make one pound. Let's go with... Wait, it's one bee. So one this bee. Is really, this is a really long way, isn't it? 250 mm. miles. To make a pound of honey? No, I, can't, I don't even know what a pound is. I don't, to be honest. I, don't, I, don't, I, I couldn't weigh a pound if you, if, if my life depended on it. How I big could, is it? I don't know. Let's yeah, hear the number anyway. I'm interested. Ninety thousand miles. Ninety thousand yeah, miles. Three times around the globe. Crazy, that oh. isn't it? God, it makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I think honey isn't vegan, is it? Uh. I don't think vegans I, eat honey. They, they don't, but it's a bit of a technicality, I think, within the vegan community. Might be wrong. But some of them do. Some of them are like, yeah, that's good. Like, some some do eat an egg. It's a funny... Oh, really? There yeah. you go. Yeah, some. Some. Because bees just keep on making that honey, man, regardless of whether you're eating it or not. Yeah. And also, when you harvest the honey, it's not like the bees suffer. Because then you get rid of your bees. You want to keep your bees, so... The honey they make is so that they can get through the winter. So yeah. you obviously give them food, like sugar water, I think my mum gives them through the winter. Okay, okay. So you just you end up replacing their food with a different food, and sure, it's not... Yeah, I guess it is still mean. You're, you're taking away all of their hard work and replacing it with maybe a slightly horrible alternative. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's a technicality, I think, that one. Like eggs, yeah. isn't it? I mean, the and chicken... Avocados, apparently, as well, huh? And well, avocado. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah that technicality was to do with how they're made, like pollinated or something like that. Yeah. Oh, I love avocado, bro. It's arguably one of my favourite foods. Brilliant, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic, isn't it? I wonder how many people have injured themselves from avocado. Um, oh yeah. Depipping. It's called during there's, the there's pandemic. A, there's a term for it, isn't there? It's like avocado hand or something. Is it? Yeah. 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 There's a you term. Be looking at up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a term for it. Sure, it's avocado, <laughs> avocado hand or something. I went on a massive rant once on the podcast about avocados and the avocado mafia because it is like the the avocado is the biggest hustle ever because you have no idea what you're gonna get when you open it. It could be green, it could be brown. <laughs> it's, could be. It's a fifty fifty chance, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> load of the cartel got have, have switched from cocaine to avocado. Yeah, why not? Yeah, the mad, isn't it? Avocado. Mafia, it's, it's a thing. It is a thing. It is uh, avocado hand is a thing. I'm just yeah. reading up on it now. It says it's giving me advice on how to remove it. So the, the way to do it I'm is to hold hold the avocado in your hand. So you got the pip pointing up and just hit it with a knife. So your knife goes in it, twist, and it comes out. What if you miss? What if avocado you, that's hand. avocado hand? Avocado hand. <laughs> avocado hand. There you go. Uh, I remember my mum telling me to not run with scissors, and I was like. Fuck off, mum. I'm going to find a way that's safe to run with scissors. And I remember getting the scissors and running around the house, and I'd hold them, <laughs> I'd hold it against my against my um, chest, but sideways, flat against my chest. And I'd be like, see? <laughs> Sprinting. And I'd just be like, oh, man. I'm, I hate She's just like, one day he's going to come unstuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to trip. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, dear. Uh, all right, we got another one. Question four. Four, you, <laughs> I love how I write these down, you are sponsored by Melon Optics, so um, yeah. what did early world explorers use melons for? Mm. Um, marital relations? <laughs> um, 
<laughs> what would they use them for? Melons. It's got to be something interesting. No, I can't. I actually can't right. think. Weights, weights, maybe. What do you need a weight for? Like weight training. Like on a boat, not weight. I don't think training, Columbus like, was um, so ripped. Bumpers. I might, I might be wrong. I've never seen a photo, but I. Dude, I clearly don't know. No, they use them. <laughs> do you not? <laughs> I thought you were just playing dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they use them as water canteens. Did they? They did. They did. Apparently. There you go. Yeah. Weird. Okay. I'm gonna uh, look that up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't. Maybe don't check any of these things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right let's do one more then we've done half of it uh before danny joins us i've just hit him up real quick now just to see if he's ready to go nice um, leaf hill are you aware of that yeah i'm aware of leaf hill yeah is the highest point in surrey how many meters above sea level is it 290 oh it's 294 oh that's quite close yeah right? good effort dude good effort Thanks, man I live in the highest village in Surrey. Oh, do you really? Yeah, so I knew it was like, I think it was, I, I live like 270 something. So I'm like basically, um, yeah, climb. Uh, You're acclimatized. Altitude trained the okay. whole time. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking you of altitude, those... did, you, did you watch any of the Supercross at, al- at altitude? No, I didn't. Have no. Not? Okay. I've not seen n- it yet. No spoiler alerts from the last no. one then. Okay. No, don't. I, I, um, yeah, it wasn't the same. The la- the first one I watched just felt weird with that yeah. crowd. Yeah. But I'm Wait till you watch it in the mud. Catching up. <laughs> weird. Real weird. Good, yeah. but weird. Yeah, too right. Yeah. yeah, a mudder. No crowd. Strange. Very strange. Very strange I look forward view. to watching this one. Yeah, man. Uh, Wicked. Should we try... This could be an elevator music scene, <laughs> if I'm honest. Is it? Yeah. Do you yeah. want me to get it ready? The lift music. Uh... Let's see how we go. Let's try and uh, drag him on here. I'm in a car. <clears throat> Dude, Danny Mackerskill. Crazy. What are we doing? Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Coming at ya. Do, do. Is he here? Do you, do, shall I get the lift music anyway? Uh, you might need it. Maybe. Yeah, lift. Maybe. Oh, hang on. No, We're good. He's there. Hello. Hey. All right, dude. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. This is the first time I've used Skype and a laptop in about a million years, I think. So. Is it really? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, we've got some technical difference. I've got my phone pretty much hanging off the chimney trying to get the signal for this. So. Oh, man, it's hopefully perfect. It'll, hopefully it'll work. How are yeah, you guys dude. getting on? Crystal clear. We're good. good thanks, dude. Good. Mm. Nice. Nice, just nice. chilling. Just tested all his knowledge about all sorts of things. We did a bit of a quiz. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, he's pretty dumb, actually. He's... Yeah, it turns out I'm <laughs> super, super dumb. <laughs> hey, Danny, do you know who I was with? Uh, yes, so I was with Pilg, Sam Pilgrim. Oh, class. I see. I saw that. I saw you were hitting the jump. Yeah. It's awesome. And we we were trying the Switzerland squeakers. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was interesting actually. Well, he's so good at like front wheel stuff because he's like um, from quarter pipes and um, that. So he was really, he was like hopping around with his foot in the foot jam position. So he had yeah. a completely different like technique. It was well interesting. How are you getting on, Ollie? Yeah. I'm, I'm still on five, dude. Yeah. Class. You need to try it. You should try, um, you should try, see up the lip of one of the takeoffs and the jumps. You should try, um, kind of stopping up that and squeaking and trying to do a little sort of fakey nose manuals on the it, on transitions. It feels it's a really good so way of learning. fast, though. It feels so fast. Well, it's, like... it's, ba- it's basically the same as doing like a manual. If you're doing a manual with... If you're doing a manual without a back brake, obviously you're more likely to loop out. But if you've got the back brake there, it's always there to save you. So it's the same in the fakey yeah. nose manual. You know, as long as you've always got your finger on that front brake ready to catch it, then uh, you can kind of just. That one you did yeah. in the river was unbelievable. So the other sick. day, I was, I was, it's see, it's and wow. I mean, it's uh, I've been doing them for a long time now. Yeah, uh, it was good fun. I mean, I've been I've been loving mucking about up here. It's been it's been class getting so much time with the bike. So, 
Yeah, yeah too right. I've been fanboying you hard actually on uh, same on social media. Yeah, just because like <laughs> it's all so like relatable, like pallets and sleepers and. Do you, you know what I mean? It's not like a fest jump oh. where you can't work out how big it is or you can't work out anything. It's just like pure bike skill on something that you can understand. Mm. Yeah, it's, I've, I've been enjo- I've been enjoying it. It's been uh, I mean, pallets are kind of our bread and butter learning, aren't they? When you're when you're yeah. growing up, so it's um, it's been fun just have been sort of forced into riding on that kind of setup and just going out and mucking about. Yeah, so. definitely. It's uh, yeah, being dude. Some of the content you guys are pumping out is so good, killing it, absolutely killing it. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's been. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've spoken about it a million times on this, but it's been that's been cool getting so much bike time yeah. time in the last week. Well, because it's I've missed it the last two winters. I've had I've been injured, so I kind of missed out on my own kind of time that I normally get to kind of ride for myself. So it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you, I'll definitely get, get my fill. <laughs> you've killed it in this pandemic, haven't you? Because you, so you've rented a spot with the boys, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, all, all my, you could kind of see it with the way everything was going uh, pre lockdown. And then um, basically, my, some of my can, uh, projects got put on or postponed. So uh, we kind of headed up north and, uh, yeah, we've managed to kind of be here for the last uh, twelve weeks or something like that. So, have you? so what do you do? Just Air- have you just like Airbnb a spot to hang out? Uh, I well, it wasn't Airbnb, but it was like a like a house. Um, myself, Duncan Shaw, and uh, a younger writer, Rory Semple. Um, yep. We kind of moved up here, uh, and the the area we're in has just got miles of trails and um, it's kind of like not the kind of local spot in the area but it's it's kind of off the beaten track so, so it's been pretty sick. nice you know I've just been putting the miles on the e-bike and uh riding yeah. the trials bike loads in the in the driveway so pretty so good. when when did you make the call that you had to get out of glasgow right well i mean as soon as i saw it coming i mean really i don't know it's, it's a tricky one to talk about because obviously there's there's sort of controversy about getting out of the city but yeah the last place i wanted to get locked down was in the flat in glasgow um i mean i lived in quite a busy flat there with uh you know like two of my flatmates are journalists for the bbc um who are going to be working from home um ali sees also he's he's been down in uh he's been down in the flat in glasgow um with his girlfriend there so it's kind of meant that we've all had space but i mean we lucked out big time with this place it's just been kind of almost a bit of a dream setup really so yeah. Where so do you get cool. all the sleepers from and the pallets, by the way? Do you have to order them in? Uh, yeah, we just bought. We end up we end up buying a bunch of uh, pallets. Um, I think about twenty of them. The, pa- the pallets were pretty cheap, but I think it were about two hundred quid uh, post or delivery kind of thing. So, um, <laughs> well, and then uh, one of my friends, uh, Nash Masson, he runs a bike shop uh, up near Boat Garden, um, which happens to have like a rail, uh, like an old uh, steam railway set up next to it. So. We've borrowed some sleepers from outside his shop and a couple from the yard, and we'll put them back afterwards. No flower <laughs> beds getting made out of these bad boys. So. <laughs> oh, it's the dream setup. The dream. It is. It is oh, such a good idea. Sleep, sleep, sleepers are class. Just the weight of them, they're just so sort of sturdy, and um, yeah, it's pretty good. So yeah. Yeah, I'm loving it. Good. Loving what you guys are doing. So what's the plan? Are you staying up there for a while? Yeah, I mean, Forever. I, don't know. I mean, who knows what the, the deal is? I mean, uh, Scotland, we're still a little bit behind you guys, I think, mm-hmm. even. Um, the um, government's quite conservative up here as well. So, um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. You know, I think it seems that things like productions, like friend Robbie Mead has kind of been working uh, on a few things recently, and it seems like kind of bits and pieces like that are kind of firing up again but yeah i can't imagine really being sort of traveling around too much in the, in the next few weeks at least so nah yeah. man no nah, same same yeah we spoke about it loads obviously on here but it's definitely uh i think we're going to be home for a little while longer aren't we that's for sure mm-hmm. yeah i think it'll be good once, once the floodgates open i reckon it'll be amazing like like tourist boards will just like want people to come and do yeah. stuff and yeah they'll make it as easy as physically possible i think mm. yeah for sure i mean i think there's going to be that tricky 
there's going to be this tricky in between where, well, like we're in at the moment, where everyone's thinking of trying to put events on during these times, which is obviously everyone's got to try to make a living. But I think there's going to be a lot of um, uncertainty. I mean, I suppose that goes without saying, but yeah, you know, you, you can make all the plans you want, but the reality is it's probably likely not to happen the way you're imagining it. But um, I've got a lot of stuff in the in the pipeline for the towards the end of the year so hopefully that will uh come right. off yeah yeah i don't know would you get on a flight now if you had uh, i mean for, for me personally i think it's i don't know the way i look at it is it's pretty unwise really you know yeah. uh yeah. i'm i don't know what you guys what you guys think of it i mean it's i would i, I would hate that i would hate to have to quarantine for 14 days for some work you know, whereas yeah. I'm lucky I can do a lot of my stuff. Current, in my current setup, I'm probably putting out more content um, yeah. than I would, you know, being sat on my ass in a plane going somewhere. Um, so, so true. hopefully I can kind of keep folk happy enough for the next wee while at least before we can kind of get bigger stuff on the, on the go. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I would, to be honest. I think, again, Ollie and I spoke about it loads on here, but I think especially when you've got a bit of a plat I say a bit of a platform I'm referring to my platform here not yours yeah. at all because yours is <laughs> not a bit of a platform it's very <laughs> it's very much a massive platform <laughs> but you you know you have to do the right thing by that as well don't you you don't want to be out you know seen out riding with a group of people you don't want to be that guy that's doing the flights and traveling and you've almost got yeah. to, you know you've got to do the right thing by I that as well I mean, it depends it depends what you're doing I mean I think between myself and uh, Ollie it's probably the same you know where we're not racing uh so you're not kind of that's not what's expected of you you're kind of i mean we're kind of more i don't like to say it but sort of content creators are yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, and i mean the view of it is there's you know i mean i think it'll probably it's, this is giving a lot of people a chance to explore home a lot more especially in the racing world that for sure it's, it's crazy it's, isn't it yeah they have to spend all their time on the road so it's um yeah i mean i'm always a big advocate of of stuff i mean i've done so many of my films here in scotland um but it's amazing like how much there is on your doorstep um that yeah. you just don't know about i mean it's the world seems quite small when you cut around in a car or especially when you get on a plane but mm. see when you get out on foot or on a bike in your local kind of within the a 10 mile radius of your house there's so much stuff that you just you never knew was there or so many sort of I, re cool I really like stuff. that I've just bought an old car and that <laughs> does exactly the same job it just makes like the radius smaller like you just like the furthest you go is like 20 miles away and it feels like a mission <laughs> yeah I quite like it I could get used to it you know the, there's certainly elements from the whole lockdown that I think I'd like to keep oh, yeah yeah you said yeah. as well Ollie didn't you that you've explored places around like your local area that you didn't even yeah. know existed that are a bike ride away yeah I spend and... my whole time on my bike in the in the woods and there's just certain directions maybe even i wouldn't normally go in and yeah and there's so much and i guess where you are there's actual wilderness like you can actually go well oh, here it's, it's it's insane i mean we're i mean yeah i've been out i mean i've been putting some pretty serious miles in on the e-bike around the local area and i can quite honestly say i go out and i don't see a single other person yeah. I see tons of wildlife, like there's loads of deer, pine marten, seen some capercaillie, seen everything, all all the kind of different things, but you just don't see a single other person, so it's been, it's like I've had the place to myself. It's have you done any cool. e-bike, have you have you done any wilderness e-bike packing? Uh, n I wouldn't say packing, I mean yesterday I was out on a mission, I posted a wee thing on my Instagram today, um, I went out on like a three battery mission yesterday oh, wow. uh, up on the hills here. And it's, it is, because the thing is like, you, you, like I've got like a Evoc maker backpack that has like a holder in it. So there's one main battery down, right down the kind of spine. And um, the other one goes in the side. Right. And it, it obviously weighs a little bit, but because you've got the power off that show um, e-bike itself, then it's, yeah. it's not like a, you don't really feel it. Um, as much as but I've been doing quite a lot so I feel pretty strong with it um, mm. and the terrain and the the range that it opens up I mean it's the kind of place that it would just been type 2 fun 
at very best on a mountain bike. You know, yeah, and you'd probably suffering. be walking a lot, I guess, as well, right? Oh yeah, I would say I would say on the ride I did um, yesterday, I'd probably be walking at least fifty percent of it. Yeah, um, yeah. Wow. And it was probably I would have done maybe like two and a half thousand meters of climbing or something like that. Um, wow. Of like really. That's proper mountain biking. I mean, I can't even. I need to. I'm gonna do a wee sort of. I'll go out and document one of them sometime. But it's like really, kind of quite next level, terrain or stuff. But you get the feeling. It's like the the feeling of being on the mountain bike doing it. Just, but you can kind of venture up these sort of faces and just never have to push your bike or carry it. It's mint. It's so, so good. Sweet. So. I mean, I'm I'm turning a total advocate of e-bikes. I just <laughs> think they're the best. Um, it just because it's like something new and different for me. So yeah. Were yeah, you I'm gonna like to, on the? Well, gone, sorry. Oh yeah, I'm just going to quickly try to start my Skype here. I don't know. I can't see your faces. I've clicked on something, and <laughs> hopefully this doesn't. Hopefully this doesn't cut. Out. <laughs> oh, here we go. I can't see you, Ollie, for some reason. I don't know why. Don't worry I about don't it, know. dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you probably don't need to right now. Just look. Oh yeah, I just look the same, but a bit older. <laughs> it's easier to kind of talk. Yeah, too right. <laughs> hey, I got yeah. a hammock. I see. Where's this hammock. going? Yeah, well, I got a hammock for bike packing reasons, oh. and I slept in it the other night. It's, it, it takes a bit oh, of yeah. technique, I think, yeah, sleeping in a hammock. Where did you... Yeah, you're going to have to explain so. a little bit more, dude. Where did you take it and what did you do? <laughs> well, I t it was a test run, all right? It, I've got it for bike packing reasons because I want to like, do some like overnighters. Yeah. But I just had to stay in Gloucester somewhere we were on that build with Bren. And I just brought my hammock along so that, we weren't, so, so that I didn't have to sleep on the floor. Hmm. And it's really weird to sleep in. You basically you sink, and your head sinks to the lowest point, you know, until your legs are in the air. Oh, but yeah. If you get good at it, I think it'd be fine. I find I'm pretty uncomfortable. I'm not gonna it makes, lie. It really? makes my back. It makes my back wince thinking about it. I think. Yeah. But it's oh. a good. It's a really cool idea. A cool idea for sure. I think whenever I've been in one, my mum used to have one in the garden, and I'd end up with my feet real high, and then my feet would go numb, and I'd. Just be like, nah, I'm out. I don't. I'm not into this. Or I don't want to wake yeah. up feeling paralysed. It's kind of not. It's yeah, not my idea of a nap. My experience, if I'm honest, I yeah, I had my. You know, when your face just goes big, you wake up and you're like, <laughs> your eyes won't open. It was like that. <laughs> what all the blood in your head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I look forward. I look forward to seeing more of this hammock in the future. That <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, you will do. You will do. I I just love the idea of e-biking e-biking to a spot say even if you just did a whole battery in eco that's actually a mm. long way isn't it you get some range out of them yeah yeah how, how much is a three battery ride how many miles so i mean the the climbs i was doing i mean i did about 70k but that's like i mean it's hard to describe the sort of climbs that you're going up like they are i'm in the easiest gear and still pushing like full watts right like, yeah breathing out, you know really breathing trying to get up these mountains and like you, you know, you quite quite often get like a a solid, maybe at least one and a half thousand foot, no kind of let up climb up the sort of face of some of the stuff. So, so it was three but three batteries altogether on wow. that. Um, but then I was also, I mean, you could have definitely used eco a little bit more across some of the flats. Um, but like I used the full, like I properly juiced everything I could out of three batteries for that. <laughs> um, Although I, I did, I did muck about trying to film some stuff at the top of some of the hills, so I could have, I maybe had a few bars left. There was some bar anxiety trying to get home at the last, at the last, the last battery. Yeah. Man, it's bad, isn't it? It's bad when you start thinking oh, that you're funny. running out. Oh. That's, well, that's why. I mean, I know a lot of people like to run quite light setups, but and I'm all, I always love riding a bag, um, just having at least a pump, a tube. I know you can clip them onto your bike, but. Mm. Um, I usually carry my water in there, but uh, see if you've just got one extra battery for the e-bikes, um, it really kind of opens up a different kind of world, I would say. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of just—I mean, kind of like you do in the mountain bike. You just like, oh well, I'll do another lap, or I'll do just that little bit more. Or you can kind of rinse like a boost 
ride home or something like that, you know. So pretty bloody amazing. Treat yourself. Yeah, what exactly. motor yeah. do you have in your e bike, by the way? I'm, I'm intrigued. It's a, it's a Shimano. One. Is it? Yeah. I don't you, know if I can well, get yeah. a spare battery for mine. I've got a uh, Bosch yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think it depends on the bike. Yeah, I mean, it is, I'm lucky that the batteries are detachable. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't the highest. I mean, I think they're like 500 watts. I think you can get bigger ones, but um, or I don't think you can get bigger ones for that specific for the, the heckler or whatever. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I can. I mean, you can only see. I mean, when when the inevitably believe the sort of battery technology gets better it's hard to apart from cost it's hard to not see it sort of taking over things a bit totally, definitely yeah definitely yeah. i mean obviously yeah. you're a huge advocate for him you know seeing you riding it throwing, yeah. throwing I mean, it I've around been, I've, been, I've been the one that was pestering santa cruz for it to be honest because really saying yeah because like i i mean i do a little bit of motorbike trials yeah. uh, and i love that kind of um I just love the sort of exploration side. Um, and I didn't really have much of a go of some other brands. I had a wee shot of a Focus before, um, but never really kind of gave it a proper go. Uh, mm. But as soon as I got the Heckler, I don't know, I've just been, I mean, I've, I've done a probably, I've done at least maybe two, two and a half thousand miles maybe or something on my Heckler so far. Yeah, wicked, and, geez. and I dip it around the garden. I mean, all the stuff, it's the same bike that you see getting smashed around the driveway here all the time. <laughs> Driven. I don't know if it is waterproof, by the way. I, I was in the, the rivers the other day just treating it like a normal bike. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think riding that, you know, like riding trials on it has made riding a normal trials bike any easier? Because of the, the weight? Yeah, or... I mean, I'd say, I mean, I feel, I'm sure I've, I've, I'm way fitter. I mean, I would think in lockdown if i was riding this much i would obviously be way fitter than normal anyway but um that i was buying the, like the e-bike is quite a full body work i mean it so is the mountain bike of course yeah um, and i'd probably have stronger legs realistically i'd be pushing more watt um weird to think isn't it because i've heard someone say you're in like a different aerobic zone so it's almost mm -hmm. like almost better if you're going because yeah, I mean, your cadence is higher you mean is that yeah, or just your heart rate is lower so it's at like a oh. fitness building um it's insane i don't know how to describe it i mean i feel like i could ride the thing i mean obviously if you've got batteries i feel like i could i mean if you at the end of a three battery ride you're worked it's kind of like i mean it's if you went to morzine and did shuttle runs and lifts all day you're going to be worked yeah it's like um but i feel like you know i suffer with like a a bad back um and like when I ride the with a torn disc that that I did back in two thousand nine, and um, the trials bike's obviously quite extreme. It's hard not to get on yeah. it and jump as high as you can. Or and uh, I used to get quite a bad back riding the mountain bike as well, just because I wasn't riding it enough to kind of get yeah. into the the sort of condition for the position that I'm in. Whereas now, like with rattling around on this thing, I just feel. I don't know, probably better than I've felt in the last like ten years. It's been... Really, that's yeah. cool, isn't it? Though how how almost you can get someone. I'm going to try and really explain this the best way I can, but I'm going to screw it up. But someone can like get into mountain biking who's maybe mm -hmm. unfit, but is also having like the same experience as someone like Danny Mackerskill, who's found yeah. e-biking at like a similar sort of time and is having the same sort of journey that's... to fitness. Do you know what I mean? No, it's meant. I mean, you yeah. see, even like around here, I have seen. Um, since the lockdown's eased a bit, I've seen some more folk out on e-bikes, especially some older folk, and you just, I just think it's mint. Yeah. But if you, like, you can obviously look at that. I don't want to keep rabbiting on about e-bikes, but, um, <laughs> but you can obviously look at them as, like, a, a sort of cheat thing, you know, you've got to earn your climbs and whatnot, but if you basically take the sort of same energy that you're going to pair into a mountain bike ride and put that into the e-bike, then you can, especially if you've got the right terrain for it, you can do things that are it's like a different thing almost mm. it gives the mm. sensation of riding a mountain bike but it's like uh i'm always I more know. worried about e-bike rides than mountain bike rides like in terms of fitness our e-bike rides are so intense and it's so oh like, yeah you never like chill up a climb and talk and any of that you're just bombing everywhere like I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah 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 i wait i'm way more scared of e-bike rides than i am of mountain bike yeah, rides yeah you've, you've got some crew for it down there like yeah you know, Bernard yeah. and everybody. Like, a lot of dick swing, swinging goes on, for sure, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, we have we have like a tea time lap that we've been doing here. Like just it's like one battery, either trailer boost and um, I don't know maybe like twenty k or something like that. And right. it's just magic. magic. Is it? You just flat out the whole time. Oh, it's so good. I need to get on this program a little bit personally. I'm not oh, really reading one that much. A hundred percent. Yeah, I need to get you on that program. Again, you have, it's like totally. Uh, it's definitely feels like the future. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you mm. said earlier that you rode you rode a bit of motorbike trials, and it mm. made me think about like like uh, when you were when you were growing up, who were you like? Because because you sort of I think of um you as the first of your style of riding so oh, who no, are you like looking no. at no but I, I i i was looking up to the same people like martin ashton and those guys yeah but but i feel like yours is more like street and bmx and loads of different other stuff yeah but if you if you watch all if you watch like martin and ashton martin hawes's stuff um especially i mean ryan leach and jeff lenoski were a huge influence yeah on me. well obviously at craig as well yeah Although yeah you, I mean, well, he, he was in—he was always in um, MUK, but you very rarely got to see videos of him, you know, when we were in our kind of teens, kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. But if you look at what they were doing by then, it's just, you know, it's not like I've done. I'm doing. I mean, maybe I added some, I would say, natural kind of progression stuff. Like we tried to do some flips and yeah. occasional tail whips, which I still can't really do these days. Um, painful aren't they yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just i just cannot get i just cannot get tail whip styled i do them goofy and i just because i never hit jumps or like um it's always like flat tail whips or up a drop they're just so much energy and you try them 20 times or you do them for like a line in a video and then i don't really do them much you know with that no. but, um, <laughs> but yeah no definitely i mean that right uh hans ray as well i mean hans is kind of it was definitely more Martin Ashton, you know, it was definitely MBUK. Yeah. One. And then we had a couple of uh, videotapes, um, like Revolution and Evolve Contact. There was like a, a series of trials videos with um, Ryan Leach and Jeff Lenoski being the main kind of writers. Ah, oh, cool. I didn't see those. No, I, I didn't. had one called um, OTP Trial Technique. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, that cool. was good. Yeah. Really? Did you see, did you see OTP's film the other day? Where he's no. Writing? He, he's almost like dressed up like a sort of clockwork orange character like um who's this who is it Op-P. Op-P. Op-P is like the he's like the sort of grandfather of of uh trials riding kind of much like okay. i mean like him and hans ray used to compete in the trials but i would say Op was probably more technically um What's the word? But he was, yeah, better technically. Gifted. Better to come. Yeah, I mean, Hans kind of understood how to kind of take it mainstream, whereas yeah. Ott was uh, more of the sort of top comp guy. But he did this video. I mean, I don't know what... what he must be sort of, certainly late 40s, early 50s, and he did this sort of obstacle course round his... Um, I don't know if it's like a tennis court or something, or a basketball court, and it is absolutely mental. You I'll need to go check it. it. Yeah, well, sorry. Will. We'll link to it in the show description as well for people. We'll, we'll throw it up this, there. Yeah, it's on this kind of road bike, all dressed in what is slightly weird, but it's mental. <laughs> kind of hey, so, <laughs> thinking about it, was Hans Ray the first dude to do trials on like a mountain bike? Before then, it was all 20 inch? Yeah, I would say, I mean, yeah, he grew up kind of riding the, the kind of original kind of converted sort of Schwinn style. Um, 20 inches and they, you know they they evolved into the sort of gt 20 inch bikes yeah okay but then he kind of did that kind of transition onto the mountain bikes and really sort of took it to the mainstream you know um yeah yeah whenever i think of hands i do think like you just said of someone who really managed to sort of almost penetrate the industry and get some really big sponsors behind him as well mm-hmm. you know i always think of him with the you know gt stuff and oh god yeah, that still, that jersey is just like iconic to Hans Ray, yeah, right? You see that? Still, it's funny, he's still got the same. same yeah, he, he's like eight, stayed eight years later, you know. Yeah, it's, stayed I all the way to through. his um, talk. You know, like oh, he, yeah, he does yeah. those like talks. It was one of the coolest things ever. It's mind, mind blowing, isn't it? Like, Absolutely mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. And I took a lot from it, you know, because he's kind of 
he treats him he's obviously thought about it back in the day thought like mm, i can actually I'm, I'm more of a brand yeah. i'm actually mm. ha- hans ray is like this thing that i need to keep up so all of his unit like he looks exactly the same throughout his career you know down yeah. to the colors down to the like bikes. it's very uniform so cool. isn't it? every year is crazy yeah, yeah. he's yeah. just like an action man kind of <laughs> just a different haircut eventually yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean he's massively inspiring i mean i think you know he realized what it was to kind of um kind of knew how to sort of do things that broke out with the scene you know Choosing yeah. the right, choosing the right locations that had a bit of a story, you know, whereas the Cliffs of Moor are, you know, later on in his career, yeah, um, or jumping on that, uh, the top of that taxi, was it taxi? Oh, that that something? image yeah. is amazing. Yeah, I love that that image. But, and and now yeah. even in days like much more, uh, you know, in more modern times, he's like the Kilimanjaro trip that you did with him. Aye. How crazy yeah. was that? Oh, it was well. Crazy, yes. Crazy is the word. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he's really, yeah. It's been, it's, it's been really cool hanging out with Hans actually over the years. He's definitely, I wouldn't say, I mean, could you? I mean, I suppose you could call him almost like a mentor in some ways. It's been yeah. cool hanging out with him so much and kind of sort of seeing the way it's seeing the way it all works. And oh, it's hard being, for it to not rub off, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, like that, for sure. Big yeah. time. Big time. So you got altitude yeah. sickness, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Was that, how I mean, how was that for you? Yeah, it was <laughs> not, not very pleasant. It looked it's rough. funny, like I mean, Hans really. I mean, he's in in more recent years, on the last, well, for most of, a lot of his career, he's been doing these kind of adventure trips, you know, yeah. often with other athletes, and uh, yeah, doing actual real adventures is quite difficult quite a challenge you know i find i quite like i quite like the the sort of more bear grills approach where you basically make it look like you're going to adventure but you're chilling <laughs> yeah. in the hotel so getting, uh, getting asked to go out to you know to go up mount kenya and, and kilimanjaro was definitely you know a no-brainer for me to go and do mm. but i hadn't quite uh realized how difficult it would be and how much i dislike altitude <laughs> What's it feel yeah. like? I've never even experienced that ever. Have you, Ollie? Well, that, so this is... Sorry, carry on. No, no you, you go, you go. Uh, I mean, it's... I mean, it was meant... Because, I mean, doing a real... You know, if you're doing a, a real adventure, then it's obviously legit. Um, I mean, from my side, I liked it when I'm doing sort of, say, moving image or... I mean, photos are a little bit different, but if you're doing a moving image project, the, the ideal situation is where you do something that... It, it looks harder than it is, or is mm. it? It's at least as hard as it, hard as it looks. Yeah. Whereas with altitude, there's not as many people that have been up there to actually sort of have a sense. And if you're watching like somebody on Everest, you basically need to realise that it is ridiculously tough at those kind of conditions. Yeah. Obviously, Everest is a lot higher than Kilimanjaro, but you how high is Kilimanjaro? Uh, it's just under twenty thousand feet, or That's six thousand. Six hundred meters. But, oh, it is high then. It's high. But it's just everything you do. It's just, you know, it's like a real, real effort. Especially if you've lived at sea level your entire life. Um, it's definitely yeah. very tough. But I think the more I think if you do, the more you, that you kind of do it, the more your body kind of gets used to acclimatizing. Yeah. Um, but that that was my first real trip up to. It. I mean, I find even doing that um, the mega avalanche, like I would notice the altitude at like ten thousand feet. Or if you're oh, right, yeah. if, if you're up in Lavinio, the top of the Caracello, or up on top of the mountains up there, um, you know, it's amazing how much the altitude can have affects you. Mm. Yeah, when you, just, did... you just feel drained. Is that pretty much? It's just like everything's everything's just massive. It's like being hungover all the time. Yeah, like exactly. The worst yeah, worst right. hungover of your life. You know, um, just and and the the thing that's tough about altitude is. Um, Especially if you're if you're on the way up, then uh, you have to be really careful not to overexert yourself because right. you the altitude sickness gets you 24 hours later, so it doesn't. Um, so if you overcook it, like we, that's what happened to me on um, on Mount Kenya. We actually tried to go up there pretty quick, really. I mean, I'd yeah. kind of come in from sea level, um, and we we missed out one of the stops on the way up the hill, and we also stopped because we were filming. We stopped to do photos and 
film on certain bits and it's very easy like you feel you know obviously it's hard um but you feel like you could do more than you sh- mm. like you feel like you could be doing more but what you're right. thinking is if i you can't get your heart rate up too much otherwise because if if you're staying up higher than where you're mucking about then you're going to suffer for it the next day which i did so i end up getting altitude sickness on mount kenya which is funny <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it, looked, it looked hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I've got this hat. I can't remember. I can't remember that. I don't know if it's it's not Shipton's. I don't know. Somebody will probably correct me on that. Right. Right. But um, uh, we're up at this hut and I'm feeling terrible. You know, we just done this like twenty odd mile hike to kind of get there, and uh, started kind of coming down with some of the symptoms of altitude sickness. And meanwhile, there's these sort of 50 year old women and men that are outside smoking fags at the same altitude <laughs> yeah. like, how, how is it? I mean they didn't have to carry a bike up there in mind but um, and like around that kind of area there was all this vegetation as well so it doesn't even feel like you were high alpine or something like that it was a, yeah. an odd feeling but um, you yeah. don't have to go down far to reverse not reverse it but like to be safer is that right yeah yeah I mean it depends on altitude Obviously, if you're up in like Everest or something, I think you have to go down a fair bit. Um, yeah. But the hard thing was up in Mount Kenya that there was um, it's, it's it's not just a straight up the mountain kind of job where you could just jump on the bike and free wheel down to a better altitude. There's quite a lot of ravines and things that you've got to go through. Uh, so I ended up kind of getting out the getting out of the bank card and paying for a helicopter to get me off instead. <laughs> Did you actually, yeah. I'll fix it. <laughs> it's the best $2,000 I've ever spent. <laughs> Basically, that the plan was to go up uh, up uh, Mount Kenya up to Lundudna, I think, which is the kind of uh, the main point of the mountain that everybody kind of walks to, most accessible point. And then we were going to carry on over the top of the mountain to... Uh, the other side, we were going to get a bus and then head over to Mount, uh, to Kilimanjaro, which is in Tanzania, like an eighteen-hour bus yeah. journey. Or something. Yeah. But um, but there was no way I was going to even make it if I missed that point. There was no way I was going to be able to carry on with the journey, and getting out was also going to potentially ruin me for the rest of the trip. So mm. we decided that it would be best to to get the chopper down. I went to hospital for the day, and then got the bus the next day to the to Kilimanjaro which is pretty harrowing <laughs> yeah, I, hey, I actually don't know what altitude sickness is thinking about it did you did they put you on a drip like is it dehydration is it what, what it's, is it um I mean I'm no doctor but basic basically it's um lack of blood in your system yeah, sorry not lack of blood lack of oxygen in your system you in, right your, your your oxygen saturation levels start going down and then things like I think you start getting the beginning of fluid in your lungs because right. of it. and then you can also get uh i don't know what it is with your brain exactly i mean you just you certainly get a thumping headache and then you start getting this kind of real sort of wet cough um oh, almost like golly. starting to get, um pneumonia kind of thing yeah so I, I remember eventually getting into after being in the hospital for the night and uh still feeling rough as anything getting in this this dusty rattly bus with the whole team and uh, we had like an 18 hour dusty bus journey over to Tanzania and I remember going past Nairobi airport and thinking of, to myself like you know I, was, I, started, I did have sort of, sort of fluidy kind of lungs and I'm thinking there's like a nice flight to get me the hell out of here <laughs> easily get the bank card out again yeah exactly get myself on a flight at home you know? but no nah, I was there uh, it was good. I'm so pleased we persevered through, and it's kind of one of those, one of those um, kind of. At it's the a bucket list trip, right? Yeah. Yeah. At the, at the time, it's slightly type two fun, you know. Yeah. My altitude sickness, it was pretty hard going, but um, afterwards talking about it, and you know, it's a good one for the pub chat. Definitely. Um, yeah. True. Right. Sure. Definitely. Sure. At some point, I'll get lured up into the hell altitude just to remind myself how much I hate it. So. <laughs> I think the highest I've been was four thousand in Nepal, yeah. and we did, and we went riding, and I didn't really, I didn't really notice anything. And when we went riding, I couldn't believe how just weak and lame I was, and how, like you say, hungover. Yeah. It makes you feel. It's mad, isn't it? It's a lot. I mean, 
this is maybe not a good analogy, but it's a little bit like getting off the e-bike onto the mountain bike again for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your perception of your perception of what you can do at a certain speed and uh, reality really kicks in. <laughs> that is so true. Now it's going from turbo to the uh, limp home mode when you run out of battery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> From a Chrysler to a G wagon sort of feeling. Oh mate, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I've funny. been I've been liking the the recent series you've been doing, Ollie, with uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but with the uh, in your face cam. Yeah, the dildo camera. Dildo camera. I, mean, <laughs> I was I cracked. I was cracking up the other day when I was I saw your reflection in the in the G wagon. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I was I just suddenly I was like. <laughs> My goodness, you must get. Have you, do you get any good chat when you're out in the trails at all? Oh, mate, it's the worst. I feel so like so self-conscious. Anyway, even even if you wear like a chest camera and you yeah. ride along, you feel like a bit of a. <laughs> yeah, idiot. I do anyway. Like as if I think I'm important enough to film what I'm doing. Yeah. And then when it's pointed at your face, it's the worst, man. <laughs> the worst. I did. I did. It cracked me up. I was just like, the amount of expl- explanation you have to do out in the trail. <laughs> Yeah, it's genius, man. You know, only you could pull that one off. Oh, mate, I don't know if I have. I'm going to keep putting them out anyway. Yeah. Who knows? (laughs) Trying to get into this YouTube game. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I've seen that. You're in the YouTube game, right? Kind of. Kind of. (laughs) I I I I started a channel, actually, last year. I know. um, It's something I should really adopt more. You know, it's funny because I don't necessarily... Although YouTube's been the domain for the videos over the years, mm. yeah, it's not. It's not been like your platform, has it? It's been yeah, sort of other I, people's and. Yeah, I don't really. It's funny. I don't really sort of consider myself. I mean, I probably am a YouTuber, but I just sort of. I don't know how to describe it. You know, I just sort of make. Yeah. I usually tend to make the videos and they go on other, um, brands kind of channels. Um, yeah. But I think I'm in my at the moment. I'm looking for a place. I'm trying to find like a house with some land and a barn, ideally. And I think if I if I get that kind of set up, then it'll be a lot easier to kind of make um make content. That it's I'm a happy. hard one, isn't it? Because it's like you don't. I think I've always wanted someone who's good at film and good at editing to do what they're good at, and then you do riding. Yeah. Whereas, whereas it feels like YouTube content's all like you film yourself and you it's, do it yourself. It's and I... mad, isn't it? I mean, I, yeah. I was talking, to, I was talking to um, Ben another day about it. I don't know if it was on that call, or if it was on another one, but he was yeah. saying that you know you can put all this time and effort into these sort of bigger projects, you know, with nice cameras and um, you know music licenses and all this kind of stuff. Whereas you go out and just do a selfie video, you know. Like, exactly, it, yeah. riding around the hood, woods. Your own stuff and it's and it'll travel way further. Yeah, yeah. we um, were talking about that loads actually, me and Ollie, because he you went to the Sahara for that film shoot, and then yeah. you ended up with almost identical views on riding around the woods, yeah, with a dildo with, on your head for 10 dildo minutes. On my head. Yeah, it's so it's such a shame, weird, like, isn't it? yeah, I don't I mean, know, maybe, maybe it's a combination of both that would be the answer, you know. Yeah, I think that's what I think. I mean, um. That's what I see myself trying to do. I think in the, a little bit in the future, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's been quite fun. I've been quite enjoying actually trying to put out some more regular stuff, um, mucking about on on Instagram, kind of going out and uh, doing some daily mucking about. But uh, it's also the trap of YouTube as well, which is a dangerous beast. Mm. It is a trap as well, isn't it? Like, um, you know, obviously. Old Sam, Sam and Matt have been smashing it, smashing out the sort of regular, you know, that regular update thing, and whoa, it's, it's a, a whole, lot. As a, as a rabbit hole, I think. Yeah, um, Matt's have been so good, hasn't it? The lockdown stuff. Oh yeah, he's nailed, so he's good. Really nailed it for that. The pressure and to keep Sam, doing it though, isn't it? It's just. I mean, Sam's content is just so, so funny. I mean, it's always coming up, and I, I, I don't. Um, we don't have like the what do you call it the like a sign on on our YouTube or the YouTube on our TV. Base stuff's always coming up in the algorithms, you know, it's serving up, and you're like, God's sake, what's he up to today? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going out here, just it's been helping. I think he's <laughs> cut back. You know, he was doing yeah. three a week, and now he's doing two a week, which is I like, think three it, a week is a huge amount of work. 
God, well, yeah, it's huge. I think, I mean, there's a time if you're motivated and are willing to do it and have the right ideas, then it's a good way to build your channel. Yeah. And you can maybe build it up into a place where you might do some more sort of branded content or, you know, other things. Mm. But I, it can quickly, you can really see how it could sort of suck the fun out of stuff, I think. I don't know how some people do those, like, daily vlogs and stuff like that. It's, mm. it's so much work. I like that. It's just that interesting that I can talk about myself every day. Right? <laughs> no, it just be like, yeah, <laughs> riding bikes again today. Yeah. <laughs> Eat some dinner, yeah. watch a bike film. Go well, I, I talk about absolutely nothing in my ones. And... <laughs> Literally do. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It is, isn't it? It's just about it's just having a good idea and running with it, I think. It's, it's the same yeah. as this, though. Where you just sit and chat about almost nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's yeah. longer though, isn't it? Like I yeah. think that's what I like about like doing these things. It's easy, and I like watching them as well. Just because mm. it just it's more relaxing. Like if it's ten minutes and it's just you know like what well, what I do when I edit, I edit edit out any of the gaps in between words and stuff. Mm. Yeah. So YouTubey. So it ends up like just <laughs> overwhelming. Like I think you can get apps <laughs> for that, can you? I think you can get plugins or something like that. Take that out. Less I think you can. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I mean, I've, I've never tried it myself. Does Maybe it have any, my terms. does it have any setting saying. where it takes out just all the crap that you talk as well? Probably. <laughs> it's, probably just, it's probably just down the line, you know. <laughs> Make it Instagram ready. One minute clip. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> what a, we've been doing a thing, Danny, where we talk about like three things you've been doing in lockdown or watching or listening to. Uh -huh. Have you got any like recommendations uh, Even though we're starting, we haven't done this for a while, Ollie. Thank God, because I couldn't keep up. No, I, I couldn't keep up. I've been doing. I have actually been. I've been going through a bunch of the older trials video content. Uh, oh right, kid. Yeah. Yeah. I've just what your own action. content? I saw a chain reaction had actually been put up the other day. Um, yeah, chain reaction. Um, the or no, sorry, chain spotting. Chain spotting. Chain spotting. Chain oh right. Yeah, so yeah. Chain spotting. Chain spotting. That's the one. So. Chain Reaction was also a mountain bike film, but that was New World Disorder, wasn't it? Like a yes, that's I think Chain Reaction. But um, mm. Chain Spotting's up oh, on yeah. YouTube, is it? Chain Chain Spotting, yeah. You should check out. There's one called Evolve. If you just search like Evolve Trials Film or um, Revolution, some real classics. Okay. Um, yeah, I just been going through all the older kind of stuff. There's one. There's a cool um, kind of UK trials film called uh, Trial Noir. Which has like Martin Ash and Chris Atkrig, James Porter, uh, and uh, they're like proper you know, video that... segments, aren't they? I remember yes. seeing that. It's cool. Yeah, right. it's really. I mean, Chris's one's amazing, and so sort of, sort of they're all. And Martin Ashen's one's really cool. Some really creative stuff. But it's um, as I say, it's, I'm do, I'm doing nothing new these days. It's just it's, I'm just sort of watching them, looking for ideas, trying to okay. recycle recycle some old ones and get some inspiration for some new stuff as well so yeah mm, mm. and what yeah. about outside of biking netflix um, series books podcast other than this one <laughs> honestly, I've not really i mean we watched uh we watched the michael jordan documentary the other day not got to the end of it but it's been oh. pretty good that's solid isn't it yeah it's pretty amazing it's pretty mm. amazing um and to be honest i've just been doing much what I normally do. I just, I just, I always scouring uh, Spotify for new music for videos. Um, okay, that's kind of what I spend most of my time doing, or just going out in the garden and mucking about in the trails bike. So, Sick. how good's that Marlow track, Ollie? Yeah, really good. It's tight, yeah. isn't it? Well, good. good. Yeah, I've seen I people mean, have been sharing it and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. I think you're mucking around the garden. It's not a bad shout, dude. Like just because wow. I've been doing it, I've been like obviously I've been hassling you for yeah. tips on a Switzerland squeakers, but I've always wanted to do them, and it's just like the perfect time you can just piddle around in a car park trying to learn something you always wanted to learn. Oh yeah, you should um, <clears throat> once you get your Switzerland squeakers sort of uh, dialed in, you should try to get some G G turns. G turns oh. are the best thing. It's like the ultimate. I always think if some, a World Cup racer came over the finish line. <laughs> one of it that just busted out a big g-turn i was trying to teach g at it on the moment one point actually but um it would be the ultimate and but, those can be done on flat ground too so yeah so it's basically you're doing like a stoppy and yeah i mean flat flat ground's the best preferably sort of grippy-ish kind of yeah. ground 
um, grass is a bit more difficult to do them on. But you basically do a stoppie and you kind of turn in. The idea is that you turn in on the stoppie with kind of your body and the bike kind of following it. Turn in, turn in to the point where the the front wheel kind of almost jackknifes. Yeah. So you're in, you're in control of it. And then the momentum carries on and you actually fake your nose manual out of it. Out of it. Yeah, so, but you can you can do them by uh, sc- uh, stopping in, and then you can do um, in the beginning. You can use a a foot to squeaker. That's what I've been trying to do. I yeah. have been, yeah. Because I did, I kind of did on that uh, clip on the when I'm going through the river and try to go into fake yeah. nose manual. It's like a mini version of it. Like okay. I, I didn't really I didn't really do much of a stoppy, but you kind of spinning and then. Okay. That would be rad. Who out of the World Cup, um, who out of World Cup downhill riders do you reckon be the best trials rider? It's quite yeah. interesting thought actually. Trials rider. Well, I think Phil's bro. Phil. Ant- yeah, Ant- feels good, isn't he? Yeah. Ant- well, he's yeah. just generally insane at jibbing. Uh, who else? That's a good. That is a good question. Yeah, Phil comes up in my head. I, I can imagine. Be, him being I tell really you, good. Be, what would be so cool? I mean, back in. Um, I don't know if you've watched any of the stuff in the early kamikaze days, uh, yeah. you know, the kamikaze, but they used to have like a multi-discipline, you know, like basically the race, yeah, they, yeah. they would do like, they would have to do the downhill race. I think they would do, was it, I think they had a hill climb up yeah. the, the kamikaze course, which sounds like utter hell. It's altitude as well. But then they also used to, have a, they used to have a trials, uh, trials, segment i'm not too sure jill slalom was in there as well but oh dude it'd be so um, good wouldn't it? Sounds, like um you know sounds... on any sunday the movie that's what yeah. you'd be like in, on motorbikes yeah. wasn't it Essentially remember kickstarter thing. oh was it kickstarter yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. game show yeah. that yeah, was yeah. cool so I cool think a multi-discipline thing would be really cool i mean i think um there was one uh what's the the bike park down in yorkshire called um leeds leeds urban bike park Sorry? Leeds Urban Bike no, Park. Some quarry, some quarry, something quarry. Um, oh, um, oh, mate, it's well, my neck of the woods. I should know this. Yeah, it's like I, I think the Ali went and raced a race uh, there. That was like they had trials and like a cross country, and I'm not too sure if they had downhill okay. or whatnot. Yeah, you should like do that. Energy. Like four or five oh, disciplines. One that they did for, they did loads. They did it loads of times. Is it Lee Quarry? Lee Quarry. Yeah, there is Lee Quarry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the race or. Event, whatever. Not cool. Nantmere, cool. is it? Yeah. What? Nantmere. No, Nant- I think it was Lee. I think it was Lee. This one was Lee Quarry. Yeah, Lee. I know um, of Lee Quarry, but I just can't think of the like the event. That's pretty cool. Some fun, fun, some fun stuff like that. On almost on like the side of something like for William World Cup would be pretty rad. Almost It'd be like so a, interesting, man. Yeah. yeah. It'd be pretty good. Pretty you good. Do, I mean, was, you like was, downhill, cool. four cross. I don't know, trials. Mm. And slope style. Slope style. <laughs> all, all on e-bikes. <laughs> all on e bike yeah. Perfect. We don't want to restrain ourselves too hard here. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Warner's unbelievably good on a trial oh, yeah. motorbike. He? He's yeah, shockingly yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. He's been doing that for years, hasn't he? Yeah, I I'm, I'm keep meaning to go out for an e-bike ride with him because I reckon that'd be so funny, like do hill climbs and stuff. and. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure, I need to get. I got actually bought before lockdown. I treated myself before Christmas to a new trials bike. Oh, uh, sick! And for first ride out on it, up on sky, smashing through the bogs, and uh, I seized it. Did you? <laughs> so oh, why? Thrashed it way too hard out the box. And uh, oh. have I you done the it. Scottish before? You done the six days? No, it's been something. Um, it's been something I've really wanted to do, but unfortunately, I feel like there'd be a little bit of. I don't know. There's going to be a little bit of pressure on folk, you know, like a, yeah. like a Red Bull branded helmet, and yeah, you, you're pressure. like starting so at the side of Dougie Lampkin, like here you go, boys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and there's a certain pressure to be kind of probably better than I am. Like I know if I had a couple of winters practicing in the rivers, I could make huge improvements. And rather than like fiving or threeing every section, at least been able to kind of get like a few good rides in there as well. So yeah. Um, but I was threatened, like, um, Hans Ray was talking about doing it. Uh, Wicked. That, and I was like, if I was trying to sort of say to him, like, if he does it, I'll 100%, you know, if it's yeah. next year or whatever, I would 100% do it if he was doing it. I could do it with Pete or 
Yeah, I was going to say, what? Petey does it, doesn't he? Quite yeah, a f- Petey yeah. does it. Yeah, a bunch yeah. of my friends do it, who usually go up with Steve, I think. Mm. Uh, a bunch of my friends go and do it. It sounds so much fun. I, I, I'd be, I did a trial about a year ago, and we were just awful at it, man. Like, yeah, it's like I'd never ridden a motorbike before. Because it's so, it was so different for me, coming from like a motocross background, to being having to go slow, and oh, it was abysmal. It was absolutely abysmal. But I like the idea of like the long through the bogs and all that sort of, like the adventure it, side of it i really like the, the idea of that they're pretty big days i mean i think like some of the some of the days are like 100 miles they're doing yeah uh, oh, on, big like, day stood up on a bike isn't like, it yeah do you <laughs> get high seat foam for, for those events i think you can i think there is yeah. there is some things that you can you can get bigger fuel tanks and you can kind of i think sometimes you even get a fuel tank that sits yeah, like yeah. Almost I know a lot of them. There's well. fuel stops, isn't there, around, and the yeah. army takes care of it and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, Primary. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it's something, something I'd like to do, but I feel it's something that's coming in in the future. Probably yeah. a wee bit. Mm. That'd be rad. Yeah, for sure. Do you, have you ever done any motorbike trials, Ollie? You... Never. No, I used to have so only push bike trials, but I never entered any. I did mm. basically crates in the garden but i did it for years absolutely mm. loved it and i think actually it, it's taught me a lot in everything else like it like if you do every different discipline of mountain biking you can't not be good at, at you know you can't not have it so it helps everything like i yeah. love trials you've got to have the good car park tricks then to show off to your friends like yeah, at the back sure. of the van and... <laughs> yeah too <laughs> well the one thing i've i was decided that i really need to try to to learn in lockdown but with there's no jumps on any of the trails around here, actually, but I really need to learn how to do tabletop. So nice. it's, I, I, I can't, I can't even, it just doesn't work. My feet in my hands, I think that's <laughs> the bad thing that trial teaches you is it's like you're just glued to the bike. You know, your feet are just glued to the pedals and your hands are glued to the handlebars. So that, I mean, obviously with a table, you can do that with your feet on the pedals, but even trying to slide your feet on the pedals to kind of get it to go over just yeah does not funny, there you go you can return the favor ollie with a facetime yeah. tabletop I'm, tuition that'd mate, be sick I'm the, I'm the worst coach in the world <laughs> like, I'd, I'd never think about things it was interesting actually when you were like talking about it you had to really think about what you actually do because yeah everything you do you've done it so many times eh? yeah like, like there's no real freebies you just have to do it over and over again to get it i guess yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I just, I'd love to kind of get a little bit more style into the rider. I thought it's probably, probably one of the most achievable things I could do with my riding in the next while is kind of maybe trying to get a few more. I'd yeah. Change, change up the body movement a little yeah. bit, you know. Um, describe a tabletop, things. Ollie. That'd be cool. Like, describe the perfect tabletop. How you do it? You sort of do different ones, don't you? I, I, I think like the ones I really like are the BMX rider called Chris Stoffer that I used to just that I just studied VHS videos which is very difficult when you like fast forward it frame by frame <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on, a, on a VHS tape but he doesn't he doesn't like real front high bar in and then just flat on your shoulder that was I always used to want to have a oh, cut yeah. on my shoulder yeah for all of my childhood I'd, I'd want like, <laughs> an ongoing like scuff for my front wheel I don't have it anymore. <laughs> I used yeah. to call it earning your stripes. Right. Yeah. But I think Man front magic. high makes it a lot easier. But honestly, I think like just if you just had a set of dirt jumps, you know, like Matt's garden set, but they mm. don't have to be really big to, to fully get it. But it's like a taking off, taking off steep and landing steep is such a thing. So helpful for all different types of riding, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's something I just don't. I can take off steep, but just land to flat. That's where I'm at. I like <laughs> landing flat. It's just that's when I was talking to Martin Soderstrom about that. He's he's always going on about me landing to flat. <laughs> it's just the good thing about it, like even when you crash it, when you crash on the flat, you just you come to a nice stop. You know, it's just like well, you, I like know how to deal with it. But as soon as I start dealing with transition, every time I go to a skate park, I always come back with massive big friction burns on my forearms. And, yeah, yeah. Like I tend to fall out of the transition rather than like learning to fall in it. In it, like, right, okay. Yeah. yeah. You got me frothing for dirt jumping again, Ollie, I think. I was talking to uh Tom, isn't it, from DMR the other day. 
Yeah, oh, dude. I, I was like, got my... got me hyped for dirt jumping again. Just because talking to you every every week for some reason has got me like, right, I need a dirt jump bike again. Just rabbiting on about the same old shit yeah, every yeah, week. That, every week. <laughs> I was like, oh. That that clip you posted the other day of riding the trails down oh. next to the road looks insane. Oh, they're the ones That's... we've been working on. So we've got them oh. all like. We've surfaced all of them. They're like ready to go. Wednesday's the day. I'm yeah. so excited. But it's mad how big it feels. Like on proper trails, I think we're really lucky around here because we've got loads of clay, steep trails. Mm. And just that feeling of just being completely unweighted is like, I can't get it at a bike park or like I don't get hyped. Even like going to Whistler and hitting those crab apple jumps. Mm-hmm. It's not the same feeling as going, going up and going just, you're barely traveling forwards. It's so cool. But I say that I've never been able to ride a spine in a skate park. I'm so useless at skate park. So it's funny. It's funny the thing that I think people learn, isn't it? But mm. dirt jumps are just one of those. I mean, I just I look at them and I just immediately just see both my collarbones just exploding. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> <It's> Daddy, like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's just so true. You know, it's like if you don't have the pull, you know, if you if you're like slightly timid with stuff, or if you basically end up squashing a jump and then just, you know, you see the landing and then it's like the landing's gone way behind you and you just <laughs> front wheel front wheel in down to the bottom of the. <laughs> That's so funny. Is that the one that wakes you that you wake up from the dream on? Like... <laughs> <laughs> every, every time, every time. But I, I, I got like a, a hard tail, like I got a. A jackal built up and yeah. Just yeah, before, yeah. and I started writing some little you know the sort of rhythms they have in, in unit 22 skate park and doing a bit more and I was like oh this is actually this is pretty good I could actually get into this I could get into this so I've, I'm um, I maybe make a come or make my uh, way into dirt jumping yeah dude please do a trip down south on. hit some yeah. of the Ollie's dirt Eventually jumps and stuff so. that'd be cool be well why cool. not so you wake up worrying about overshooting jumps i wake up on a castle wall on my back wheel and i have to do a front flip (laughs) that's my sort of uh nightmare (laughs) (laughs) wow that's fair yeah dude cool well uh try and keep these around this sort of time danny so thank you so much man i really appreciate you taking the time out and chatting it's good to uh Good to see you to, again. Good to chat to some new faces in lockdown. That's <laughs> yes, dude, yes. You're getting I'll a bit sick back. of those two guys now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. All right, it's been 12 weeks. <laughs> Maybe you should move out. <laughs> well, well, Get a uh, hammock, dude. Uh, well, too, too many midges to sleep out outside here. I think. Yeah. You'd, just be, you'd just be bones by the end of it, I think. Yeah, true. <laughs> Fully. Cool, well, thank you, Gan. Thank you so much. Really, really good to chat to you. And uh, yeah, thank you again. <laughs> it's been really, really good to chat to you. <laughs> you guys. Yeah, Keep safe, bro. Wow, legend. What a guy. What a guy. Legend. Well, I can't even believe it when he says he watches any of my videos. I'm like, I know. I can imagine that was a bit of a trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's like Clay Porter, Joe Bowman, Danny Maxkill. Everyone's loving Mike rides, dude. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. Incredible. I've um, whilst we've been watching this, what whilst we've been doing this, I've been uh, I've looked up this Ot P thing. Okay, and it does look mad, and he is like a legend. This Ot P, so I, de- okay. I definitely reckon we should put that in the description. Yeah, send me the link and I'll put it. Yeah, down we'll do. I'll send it down now. Below. Yeah, down below. Uh, I figured we let's set a little challenge since we've had Danny Mac on. So the G turn, if we, dude, I've been trying. I'm telling you, I've been trying. I've gone over the bars more yeah. in the in the last in this pandemic than I have in the last really? twenty years. Yeah. I've, it, so if we get a a seven day G turn challenge for yeah. everyone listening, yeah. Whoever gets the best G turn, yeah, I'm up for it. Yeah. Maybe post it on Instagram, tag yeah. us, tag you, tag me, tag Danny. Maybe the yeah, maybe G-turn yeah, tag Danny. G turn challenge. G turn challenge, and we'll give away a. Let me try and think. What do we can do? Uh, we'll give away a year's worth of brake pads. Yeah. And. What you're giving? Yeah, I'm not giving anyone my brake what? pads. <laughs> Send me some money. Uh, a year's uh, supply of broken brake pads. A year's supply of used brake pads. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> no, we'll do a year's supply of brake pads and 
I don't know, we'll throw in some Red Bull sunglasses. Red Bull spec sunglasses. Seems we've had Danny on, he's a Red Bull athlete. And it sounds like a good deal. And let me tell you, with this challenge, I'm coming after it. Let's I go. want those brake pads and I want those glasses. <laughs> <laughs> all right g10 challenge is on seven days we'll announce the winner on the next episode and we said we'd announce the winner of something else on this episode what was it i, mean, I don't know you, you're the you're the contest dude yeah I should probably stop doing um, this i'm just Catching a co-host this. uh what did we do i did oh it was this it was win merch Winner Hook It Podcast merch t-shirt. And the winner is... God, who could it be? Uh, Brad Taylor. Brad Taylor 121. Hit me up. I'll send you some free merch. The Good gift man, that Brad. keeps on giving. Well done, mate. Fantastic. All right, dude. It's been emotional. Oh, oh, we are tell you what we... then. What? Yeah, we are, aren't we? Yeah, I we mean, we, we can we finish the quiz if you want to finish the quiz. Finish the quiz. Good, dude. <laughs> There's five questions left. Some more shady race results are going to come up otherwise. No, there's not. There's no race results, I promise. There's no race results. All right, quick fire questions. Ready? Question six. Which yeah. US rapper released a song called G Wagon? Uh, well, there was the dude with drawings on his face that it goes G Wagon, G Wagon. Uh, yeah. His name is. It's not called G Wagon, though, is it? No, it's not. Okay. Oh, what's his name? He's the. I'm not actually a massive fan, if I'm honest, but it is. Um... Oh, how can I. Oh, the doughy guy. Uh, the doughy guy with drawings in it, on his face. You mean. Will you accept that? Post Malone. Yes, that's it. Yes. No, it's not no, him. No, I got that right. No, you didn't. You got the name. <laughs> the answer was Jeezy. J E E Z Y. Oh, Jeezy, I messed up. Damn. Yeah. Terrible song. Don't listen to it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, you're obviously a massive Michael Jordan fan. Michael yeah. Jordan comes across as fearless, but what does Michael Jack. Michael. Not Michael Jackson. Michael Jordan have a phobia of? <laughs> Michael Jordan, what does he have a phobia of? Yeah. Losing. <laughs> Good, actually, but no. Go on, what is it? Water. Does he? Yeah. See, I, I can't swim. I knew we were more alike. We just get more alike. The more I hear about MJ, the more I'm... <laughs> and not and not, not uh, MJ, no, not Michael Jackson. Michael Jordan. Yeah, I'm not like Michael Jackson. I'm basically just like Michael Jordan. Yeah, similar. Dude. Uh, last one. We'll just do eight because the other ones are a bit longer. So, right. Uwe Perez Uget holds the world land speed jet ski record. How fast did he go? Oh my goodness. 100 and, or is it knots? Oh no, mile per hour. Mile per hour. 140. Ooh, no. The answer 123 miles an hour. 23 i should have guessed it <laughs> uh, imagine going that quick on water no i can't it was so terrifying <laughs> and it'd just be concrete at that speed wouldn't it you couldn't fall off at that speed and survive could you mm. yeah it would be concrete wouldn't it it'd oh my goodness in concrete yeah it's not it's a pretty boring video actually it's just a man going really fast on a bit of still water yeah, I guess it's hard to sort of tell. He's yeah. not going past anything, is he? No, he doesn't look like he's going fast at all. It's like... Dude, imagine hitting a dolphin lied. at 123 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Jeez. Dude. Yeah. That'd it's a strange bad. thought, isn't it? Anyway. It is a strange thought. It is a strange so we're going to... we got one... Maybe we've got at least one more next week, I guess. Yeah, and then we're probably looking at... I think this week we really need to organise it, the Freedom Ride. Yeah, we should. All right, let's catch up this week and just chat it through and see what we can figure out, try and get yeah, a let's date. Let's do it. Rogate was packed on the weekend, apparently. Oh, really? It's open. Yeah, all, yeah. all in, like, different groups, but it was like a, they were fully booked out. Wow. Wow, we'll I'll have to speak to Sam then and see if we can figure something out, how we can yeah. get people there. It's, yeah. We'll, we'll make it, it happen. We'll make it happen. Yeah, it might be a night thing. It might be like... <laughs> 9 p.m. till till 11. Perfect. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll bring my hammock, dude. <laughs> yeah, bring your hammock. All right, nice man. One. Been a pleasure. Likewise. And, uh, peace. Thanks, Danny, as well. Oh, I'll tell you what we have got. 
Go. Last thing. So Zeb's been doing these amazing covers. Yeah. So he's covered, uh, you know, the video that Danny released all those years ago, which went super viral, was uh, the Inspired Bikes one. And so he's yeah, covered. Yeah, song as well. Yeah, and it's Band of Horses. Uh, mm. Funeral. Na, 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 yeah. na, na, so Zeb's na. covered it, which should be pretty sick, to be fair. So that's, if you're listening on the audio version, it's coming up. It's coming up. I hope you enjoyed my rendition as well. No one ever gives me credit. Bullshit, this is. 